can you see Tracy? Can you see my screen? I can. Lovely, perfect, Grant. So, um, yeah, like as Tracy has has uh, has has said, my name is Andrew Regan, and I work for work for Shopify. Um, so I'll just kind of like I'll, I'll obviously kind of like give a bit of a rundown of, of what I want to talk about in this uh, in this presentation and stuff. So uh, I'm lead for Kit Ireland. Um, so what Kit basically is, Kit is actually an app that's available on the Shopify app store. But Kit was acquired by Shopify, and when that happened. I came over to the kit team and kind of rose through the ranks as it were and uh, then became lead. But I'll go into that in a bit more detail as well. So just in case you're wondering what Kit Ireland was, that's it. But we are happily under the uh, under the Shopify umbrella. Um, so I've kind of like with this, like, basically like when I speak at any, any kind of event or anything like that, I always want to add as much value as possible. Um, uh, to whoever is here and but with this one as well I wanted to kind of set the tone for what the future looks like as well so with this and the way we are now um, I've just seen a notification come in here um, oh it's only a link uh, that's grand. Um, so sorry um, but like where we are now in the kind of escape in which the world is, um, we have to understand that like everyone has been pushed almost to a, to work remotely, um, and then naturally for for other people to start thinking about working remotely uh, or, or look at jobs that are based remotely. But the way we have to really look at this is that because of what's happened with COVID nineteen, the escape and the work skip for everyone is going to change forever, okay? So far the better, in, in my humble opinion, is that companies now have been forced to try and figure out how to allow employees to work remotely. So now they know that it will work. Um, and so with that, focus on building for the long term. So you can just kind of think about that remote work, it is something that you can do to add so much value to your own life, but also have your career progression and get to where you want to be in your company too. So with that as well, and um, what will I go into detail in this in this webinar and stuff like that? So I'll go into my background, where I am and, and all that kind of jazz, how I got to where I am. Um, then I'm going to go into understanding a remote team, okay? <clears throat> so with that, one of the main things, um, that I wanted to kind of go through with understanding our remote team is it's actually kind of down to two points. Number one, to look at it as if you are an like you know an employee, but then also to look at it as as if you were going into a management position as well. Okay, so there's a lot of crossover between kind of like best practices and stuff and stuff in terms of like you know just just working as part of a team or leading a team as well. Okay. So just that that's kind of like I've broken it down into two ways in, in, in that kind of way. Uh, from there onto progression, so like how can you actually progress in a remote company? Um, and then I will uh, kind of like the last slide is simply just information on how to reach out to me if you do have any questions. Uh, so as Tracy said, we're going to have a bit of a breakout room later on. But if you're not comfortable being in that kind of open environment or anything like that, that's 100% totally fine, but like, you know, you will have a way um, to either fire me an email, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, the whole shebang. So I'm more than happy to have any kind of private conversation with anyone uh, if they have any more questions around like that at any stage. So that is always there for you. So the background. Um, so my kind of experience is that like, so I, I um, studied studied in, in IT Chicago. I uh, did business and specialized in marketing. Um, and so when I finished college, I went straight uh, into working in marketing and sales. Uh, so I worked in marketing for um, a couple of different companies and stuff like that. So I was actually working in the tourism sector um, back home in Boyle. So I'm from Boyle in County Roscommon, but I'm actually living in a, in a smaller little village called Control, uh, which is just between Boyle and Carrick and Shannon at the moment. Uh, but when I was working in Boyle, like, you know, I had a great job, was very happy with it, um, working in the tourism sector and a marketing sales kind of role. But as much as with anything else, yeah, like, you know, there, was, there wasn't enough progression in it for me. Like, and I, I had just had reached the stage where I needed to move on. So at that stage, I moved to Galway. I got, uh, got a job as a marketing executive with a company in Galway. And when I was there, I found out about Shopify, okay? So with that, like, you know, I was kind of heard about like on remote work and kind of like really in a tech, tech kind of uh, tech kind of area. And I wasn't, to be 100% honest, I wasn't entirely sure about it. I wasn't sure would that work for me or anything like that. Because my tech history, as you can see one of the points there, 
it was very limited, like to be 100% frank and honest. Um, like what, and it's, it's still to this day, even though I work for Shopify, like what I know about code, I can easily fit on the back of a sound. And that is it. Like, you know, I know nothing about code um, or any of that kind of stuff. So I was a little, a little apprehensive in that regard, but I thought about it and I was like, look, it's worth it. It's worth a go. Okay. So, um, so with that, I was in Galway and I thought about Shopify. So I said, look, it's always worth a shot anyway. It's never going to do any harm to go for an interview. So I went for an interview with Shopify and the interview process was very, very simple. So I, at that stage, to be fair, in Shopify's kind of like life cycle, I suppose, it was only starting to build momentum in Ireland. Okay. So as Tracy had said that like Shopify at the moment, we have, we have people based in every single county in Ireland. So we're over 400 strong in Ireland at the moment. But when I joined, we were talking about 15 people um, in, in all of Ireland. Okay, so um, it was very much, we were kind of like quite tied uh, to Canada because that's where, that's where Shopify is based. So the interview process literally took the, took the form of a Skype interview and a Skype chat. And it was one of the ones... Um, I always love how it's kind of portrayed of the, um, like, you know, let's have a chat and, and, and see what goes. And that was the initial interview. Um, just a bit of an FYI for anyone who is, is going for a company like that who's all about a chat. I've seen it before as hiring people that like to do approach it just as a chat. But if you just approach it just as a chat, you really do have to put more effort in. You have to look at it. This is labeled a chat but it is an interview okay so that's just one bit of quick bit of advice i will give to people so the interview process to be fair was very very quick very very simple like you know a couple of skype conversations one initial one actually had to do a bit of a test after that so it gave me a test to see how i was with troubleshooting uh how we able to do on the fly how we actually able to deal with difficult customers so um with that to be fair the interview process like was quite quick but very in-depth you know what I mean? So it took the face-to-face -face interaction, then from there a bit of a test, and the final one was essentially offer, okay? Uh, oh, so Laura is just after typing in there and saying, just let you know, I can't see. Anything. Sorry, I can see your screen, but I just realized that I cannot see your slides. Oh, right, okay. Hold on a second now. Let's just go back again. I left um, a so that didn't help. Tracy <laughs> I've been glued to the computer all day. Thank you, Laura, very much for, <laughs> for letting us know. Um, well, you're more on the ball than I. Um, let's just see now. Sorry about that, Chris. Um, how about now? We can. There, there, no, there's two big buildings, which I assume are just your. Um, that's your background. All oh, right. I know why. I know why. I know why. I know why. Sorry. Aha. Uh -huh, no. I thought you were just showing us what a city looked like or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm just showing off. Like, you know, look, look, I, I've actually been out, out of void before. You know, that, that's it. <laughs> um, how is that? Can you see them now? No, sorry. And you know what? There's something been wrong with Zoom all day. So, um, like, earlier on, we couldn't see all the participants and we couldn't add people as um, panellists and we weren't the only one. So it could just be Zoom. How about now? Nothing. And nothing is changing at all. So it's still just the two buildings. Oh man, hold on a second. Uh, I do, 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 do video settings. Because, like it says, we're viewing end of screen, but. Well, this is rather annoying. I might, I might, might be good, I might be good at remote work, but you still kind of get this, uh, you still get this stuff. Yeah, something, uh, something has happened to everybody, I think, on, on a lot of the webinars, which people find really, um, Oh, just it's nice to know that this stuff happens to remote <laughs> workers who've been remote, remote, remote workers for years. Do you know what I'll do? Uh, I'll go over to this one. Hold on a second. Now. It's funny we can actually see your Zoom on your screen now. No, can you see my? Can you see my browser now? I can. Well, I can see the Zoom. It looks like the Zoom application more so. But it's not sharing actually. Man, well, that's not. Holy Moses. Right. Do you need it, do you think? Well, I could keep talking, you know, if you want. <laughs> like, you know. Well, if there's nothing, like, really... Groundbreaking. And, <laughs> well, we can send them around afterwards as well. I just, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just, exactly. we spent a lot of time fixing an issue today that was Zoom's issue, so it just took an awful, awful lot of time. We had no control over it. Yeah, great. Look, here, sure. Well, I'll just continue, will I? 
go for it. And you can and you can just you can just see me, um, which is I don't know I don't know if if, if this is better or or not than slides, but sure we go with it. Um, so where was I? Uh, so anyway, sorry, the interview process. Um, so well, can you actually see me now? When yes. I'm still talking. Perfect. Yes. Right, You're lovely. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. I just, yeah. No, no need, Tracy, for that. Um, but anyway, so the interview process, as I was saying, it was, um, it was like you know, fairly, like you know, fairly handy, like you know, a Skype bit of a test, and then obviously an offer after that. Just an FYI as well. Actually, I didn't get it on the first round. Um, so I, I went for it the first time, and I didn't get it. And it was, it was simply actually just they, they had just reached their higher numbers. So they said, they said to me, it was like, okay, and like we, we want you on board, and we'll be in touch, and all this kind of stuff. One of those kind of things, I was thinking to myself, geez, I wonder will there really be? So like in the space of time between being told that and actually being offered it again, I, um, I just kept on hounding them. I just kind of, well, not hounding them, but like firing the odd message, email here or there just to kind of like, you know, make sure that they didn't forget about me. So thankfully, long story short, uh, I got offered the job and, and, and stuff like that. So then that brought me on to training. Um, so the training that, that we got, uh, as I said, like with Shopify at that stage, kind of really, really kind of like tied to, to Canada. So when, during the training time, we were actually had to work Canadian time. So we would work 1 p.m., uh, start at 1 p.m. and work until 8 p.m. in the evening. And it was just going through training, and it was quite simple. Like you were sent all your hardware, sent to your computer, uh, your monitor, the whole the whole shebang. So you're literally ready to rock and roll. You go into a meeting room exactly just like this, and from there, um, you know, you're brought through all the different elements and stuff like that. Uh, one, uh, just another piece of advice to kind of give people if they're going into the tech tech kind of elements or thinking about going into the tech side of things, is that never ever get freaked out by not knowing anything uh, because you never ever remember everything. And that's one of the most important things. To remember, you never really will, um, and it's okay. You know what I mean? It's perfectly fine, and that's what absolutely everyone does. Um, so from that, anyway, so like getting on to the kind of next point, um, kind of adapting to remote work and, and why I made the decision to 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 start doing remote work um, was that like look ball was a fantastic city it's the class place but um, it was actually making my life a whole lot harder harder uh, living in Galway so the simple fact of the matter is that like I have a lot going on back uh, going on back home um, you know my girlfriend number one is based back home um, I'm a photographer as well so photography is actually the family business back here so I always have my hand thrown in with that uh, I'm a musician as you can kind of see I have some drums there um, but like I saw, I'm a musician, so I'm gigging as well and all that kind of jazz. Um, and so as a result of all of that, like I had to come home every weekend. I had no choice with it, you know. Um, and as a result, I wasn't actually getting the best out of ball, you know, with that, like having to come home every weekend and all that kind of stuff. So um, like being able to move back home and be able to work remotely made my life 200% easier. And I will always put my hand on my heart and say that. Uh, it's just literally because I could be be home, be home close to mom and stuff like that. Because actually, at that time, unfortunately, my unfortunately my dad passed away a couple of well, a couple of months prior to that, uh, or actually about a year prior to that. Sorry about that. But um, but it was just good to be home, to be close to mom and to my brother and stuff like that. And for even for me to get to get used to the fact of, of dad not being around and stuff like that as well. Um, so all of these kind of factors just really played in. So when I moved back home first, um, I was still living in the home house with my mother and. God bless man, but she wouldn't get her head, be able to get her head around that I was on the computer all day talking to people around the world. So I ended up actually renting an office in the uh, Enterprise Centre in Boyle, which worked out fantastically well. It was a great place. Um, and then actually later on, me and my girlfriend moved into a house here down at Cushall, and that's, that's why I'm working here now. Um, so that's kind of really it. Like an adapting from what work, it's amazing how easy it is. Like I'd say a lot of people who are doing this now for the first time, they are really seeing that, like, you know, it's kind of, you know, there's, it takes a while to get used to things. Prime example in this, like, you know, two is not working. So prime example there, Zoom, just being Zoom or, you know, just having a bit of a, having a bit of a moment. Like there's always elements like that that take place. Um, but like the first couple of weeks can be a little tricky, but when you do find your rhythm, find your mojo with it, it is absolutely, you, you'll actually think, well, I personally wouldn't ever be able to go back full time to a full time office environment. Um, so with that kind of like one of the main points I wanted to make now as well, just in light of, of the situation that everyone is in, is that remote working now is not a true reflection of, remote, of what remote, remote work really is. Okay, And what I mean by that 
is that when you work remotely, then your other half will be at their job or the kids will be back at school. You know, unlike what it is now, where you're trying to work remotely, the other half is coming in, the kids are barreling in, going absolutely haywire at you. You're trying to find something to keep them occupied for, for the next hour when you have a meeting and all that kind of stuff. So the one thing I'd just like to say to people is that, like, you know, don't, just because of the experience you might be having now because of the house is so chaotic and all that kind of stuff, don't let that influence a decision later on and think that's exactly what remote work is because it's very different when you are in your own place you have your own space like i'm lucky here i have a spare room that i can use that i set up as my desk i have some of my drum stuff here like my practice pads and all that kind of jazz that i can hammer out a few bits for for 10 15 minutes to kind of like break the monotony or whatever um so it can create your own kind of flow and all that kind of stuff so i really wanted to make that make that kind of point with it um so i'm going to keep on going um till about half another 10 minutes um so i just kind of want to hammer two points because uh just in case it was kind of going off on tangents as we we're talking there so the next point i was going on to guys is like understanding a remote team okay so this is number one of being part of a remote team and number two of leading a remote team okay so i'm sure a lot of people here is just that like as well thinking about progressing their career are already managing teams physically at the moment but want to do it remotely so this is kind of where, where i'm going with it so the first most valuable point that I have, guys, is communication. Clear communication is key to success. It's literally as simple as that. As, you, as long as you can communicate in a clear way that people will understand, then, it is, then, then, then you're on the winning side of things. So with that, like one of the key things with communicating is like your tone. Okay, so if you're writing a message, just remember this it's never how you write it it's always down to how that person reads it okay so when you are writing something and particularly if you're trying to have some element of a difficult conversation or a point that might be a little bit tricky to get across go with your gut this is what i've learned myself go with your gut write your response but before you send it take 10 minutes take two minutes take five minutes take a bit of time to think about it and then go back at it okay it's just that like i have found because i've fallen into the trap myself if you're having a different conversation you hammer out your response and you just send it off you read it back five minutes later and you're like oh jesus that wasn't great you know so it's one of those things so clear communication okay so just be really clear with people be open be honest and explain exactly what's going on try to be as transparent as possible okay so the next thing is that it that is key and one of the things that we do every day is bring your team together okay so if you are part of a team like you know make a recommendation to a manager or whatever like that or even other members of your team yourself be proactive and do it yourself bring your team together okay so the way that we do that like we do it in the shape of a morning check-in so what a morning check-in is that literally at about, well, we actually do it at a quarter past five because Kit's head office is based in San Francisco. So we, we kind of work that way off, off San Francisco time. So our check daily check-in is at a quarter past five. Uh, but that's where the entire team comes together for 10, 15 minutes, just for any updates, just to say, hey, how are you? Shoot the breeze, all that kind of jazz. But bring the team together, okay? So that you have one place where everyone can kind of see each other, talk to each other, just have that bit of human interaction. It's a great place, again, just for people to ask any questions that they've come up with during the day or asking for any updates for, for questions that have, that have come before. The next thing which is absolutely key, and as a lead, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world, is a bi-weekly check-in, okay? So if you are a lead, schedule a bi-weekly check-in with every single member of your team, okay? Or if you are a member of a team, ask your lead for it, okay? or ask your manager for a bi-weekly check-in. The reason for doing that is that it allows one-on-one -on -one face to face time, excuse me, but it also allows for the manager or for the person on the team to be able to say, right, this is what I'm at, this is what I'm gonna be at for the next two weeks, this is what I need help with, this is what I don't need help with, this is where I am with things, so don't be messaging me all the time, asking where things are, what, like, you know, how are things going on and all this kind of stuff, okay? Again, tone is key with this, but having a bi-weekly check-in with that, it allows you to set your goals, you know exactly what each other is up to. And from that, it, it, it allows for, for people not to have that kind of like someone looking over their shoulder or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so it's so, so key with that. 
So in order to do that, utilize the tools at your disposal, okay? So if you're using Google or you're on the Google Suite, so naturally Google Calendar, Google Chat, uh, Slack if your, custom, if your company have it, Zoom as we're using now. Uh, another really handy one which I love is, is an app called Fellow. Um, so if, if, you, if you haven't heard of it, check it out. And what the great thing about Fellow is that what it does for any meetings that you have that day, it actually syncs with your Google Calendar. And from there, you can actually put in the meeting points that you want to discuss. So whoever's in that meeting with you can go in, check out the fellow fellow link for that meeting that day and see exactly the kind of itinerary or whatever that you want to go through for the, for the, for the meeting. So it's actually really, really handy. So as I said, just kind of utilize the tools at your disposal because at the end of the day, there's three kind of tools that you really need. And, and that's basically a, a tool to communicate via text. So be it Slack, Google Chat or whatever a tool to be able to do video calls such as this. Um, and then what was the third one? Um, it's like, you know, I'll leave that up to yourself uh, to figure out. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, just kind of like utilize what's there um, and just to make sure that you're able to communicate with people as well. Um, one of the things as well, just a kind of an FYI for people, if you're, communicate, if you're talking with other people on your team uh, or, or your leader or anything like that, if it's something that's kind of complex and like it's going to take you forever to type out, just ask them, kind of grab you for a 10 minute hangout and then go in, do this kind of face-to-face -face interaction and stuff like that. I'd always recommend that. If you have to have a difficult conversation with someone or ask a tricky question, do it face-to-face. -face. For the simple fact is that you can read body language. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. So like, if I'm sitting here like this, kind of arms folded or whatever, you know, you can kind of tell if I'm, if I'm digging what you're saying or not, or if I'm open or anything like that. So I always recommend doing that uh, because you're just able to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, so moving on from there, uh, one of the key things with this as well, guys, is um, and the kind of like last two points in just of a remote team that, that that is absolutely key is set goals. Number one, absolutely set goals. Um, so set goals that you want to do individually, set goals for your team uh, that you want to achieve and stuff like that. So what the great thing with that it will naturally kind of like give give content that you will talk about when you're in uh, when you're in your your uh, biweekly check ins and stuff like that. Uh, but like you know, it gives the sense of gives the sense of uh, of achievement. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? That you know exactly what you're doing, and you can get your head down and get it done. Okay, because uh, another tool that I use is a tool called Trello. Uh, as I like to say, a gospel. Uh, uh, as I like to say, it's uh, it's more or less the gospel according to Trello. When I come in in the morning to see what I'm at for that day, so it's basically where you can go in and create your to-do list and all that kind of stuff. But from that, like, you know, you can see exactly what you have to get done. You've set your goals and all that kind of jazz to, to make sure it's all, it's all getting done and done and dusted as it needs to, needs to be done. Um, and then the final one with that, guys, from setting goals and stuff like that is do not watch the clock, okay? So this is one of the most important things. Do not watch the clock, okay? So if you are a lead or if a manager is coming to you and just be like, look, Andy, you said you're going to have this done by 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Like, where is it? Like, what is the crack? Right? So fair enough if that's the deadline that you have set that's grand but don't be hammering at me at half two on monday wondering where i am and progress updates and all that kind of stuff because don't watch the clock and give people autonomy okay because what you have to realize is that like we're, you're in your own home okay you're in your own environment your own safe environment that you have made yourself which is ideal for you to get your work done okay the last thing you want is for the people that are on your team, if you are absolutely bombarding them, asking for updates constantly, you do not want them to feel like a prisoner in their own home, okay? That is by far the worst thing that you could ever do. So be flexible with people and give them autonomy, okay? So that when you have your bi-weekly check-in with people, just say, look, this is what's going on, you know what I mean? This is what we expect, so hopefully by, by our next check-in that we see progress, okay? Whatever it is, okay? So give people autonomy to go off and do it because they will do it okay so and just be flexible you know what i mean because this is one of the times as well people ha you have to be flexible with people so one one of you, one of our people on your team messages in and just says look and i need to run to super value now because i know the queues are quiet to get the weekly shop can i do it you're like yes 100 percent, do it because if you beat give people autonomy and stuff like that you'll get it back you'll get it back 10x and that's just what i found myself so progression, um, and I'm nearly there, guys. Uh, we're two minutes away from half, so I'm not doing too bad. Um, so progression, um, what what does it look like, and uh, um, and how do you do it? Okay, 
to be fair with progression, and I remember actually doing a, a takeover of the of the Grower and Water Instagram page one day, and and, and a lady uh, wrote in a question and it was like, "What is the story with progression like? You know what I mean? Is it a glass ceiling if you're working remotely because you're not in the physical office with people?" The one thing I say is no. It's, there's no ceiling. I've never I've never experienced it before. For the simple fact. It's well. It's kind of one of the good old adages of work for, working from home. People are like, "How do you get that done?" You know what I mean? How like how could you, how could you do that? And you're just like, "I want to get paid. So if I want to get paid, then I have to do my work. So it's very very simple. So if you do your work, you do it well, and you you cross cross all your T's and dot all your I's, and and put yourself in the eye line of management, then you will get promoted. You know what I mean? You will do your work. Like progression is as easy remote as it is in any kind of company like that so like you know so what does it look like and how do you do it it's just what i say is just do your job well um you know do your job well to the best of your ability and always be kind of there for 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 management or your leads um and always be there to kind of like open up um and uh, open yourself up to, to to any new any new challenges any new tasks that are kind of potentially put on your plate um and just go with the flow of it you know what i mean it's, it's just as simple as that so what i would just say with progression it will happen because it did happen for me you know what i mean when i joined the kit team i was the only one in ireland uh so i've kind of like built and grown the, the entire kit team here in ireland and it's just it's just worked insanely well um because just i've done done my job and done what was asked me you know and another great thing as well is just that like again with setting goals um and you do your bi-weekly check-ins is just that like be open about your career progression or where you want to go and what you want to do and what you're aiming for and that will kind of clearly show people like you know where your head's at and what you want to do and just be open about it because it's the best way to do it you know um so that's it guys just in terms of the progression and stuff so the final slide that i have and i wouldn't mind actually spent i spent a good oil on these slides and was actually really happy with how they look um but i'll fire them on to tracy and she can she can send them out um but i have in the final slide guys um my um my kind of like just kind of reach out to me and stuff like that so look my linkedin is ender regan my twitter is at end underscore regan instagram is just ender regan and then my email is ender dot regan at jockify.com so as I said earlier on, if anyone wants a bit of a one to one time, I'm more than happy to schedule it, have a bit of a conversation and stuff like that. Uh, because as much as that now, like, you know, giving a presentation, I can't explain everything, you know, I'm still it's kind of balls flying around in my head as well. Um, so please do reach out to me. Um, so, yeah. I hope that was okay, Tracy. That was really intended. Thanks, man. I was laughing to myself about like your solution to getting your promotion is do your job. Like it just. Well, yeah, like it's, yeah, it was, you know, it was it's great. It was very, it was very you line to say. Um, just if any, if you can use the, the Q and A functionality there to ask questions, um, just to end it in this room, and like we can we can ask questions that in the other room. Uh, but here will be good, particularly if you don't want to put your face to camera. Um, and I had a question, right? How many people are on the kit team? And sorry, by the way, I saw your slides and they look beautiful. I was just commenting them on Facebook. They look really lovely. So sorry, I didn't get to them. I will share them. But yes, how many people are on the are on the kit team in Ireland? Uh, six. Okay, super. And so say say you think you say if you look at people who have been recently made unemployed in any retail, any hospitality. So maybe somebody who worked in a shoe shop in. Ballangari, I don't know why it's coming to me, but Ballangari. And uh, so really good at, I suppose, understanding, dealing with customers. Uh, you know, I know in shoe shops, for hard worker, because shoe shops are always, the shoes are always upstairs and you have to run up and get them and come back down. And so those kind of things that they, that they adapt over time. What are the chances of somebody like that getting a job in the likes of Shopify now? Um, you know, are there transferable skills that you've seen or, or people within the teams who kind of come from a background, like you say, where it's not fully tech because people think because it's a tech company, the other side that you should know all the tech things and, and from my experience. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's a it's a very fair thing. And like, to give my frank answer is yes. You know what I mean? There's absolutely no reason under the sun why anyone, if you were working in a shoe shop, if you were working in a hardware shop or anything like that, to, to, to not, um, or, or to think that they wouldn't be able to apply their skills to Shopify or any kind of online, um, or any kind of online business. Because like at the end of the day, all that is different 
is where you're sitting. So someone in a shoe shop who was selling shoes or getting shoes for someone, it's actually better because you don't have to bend down and lay shoes for people. Um, you know what I mean? So because like you're helping a customer out in a shoe shop, you're getting their shoes and you're making sure that they're happy with them and so on and so forth. You're doing exactly the same here with a like you know which I'll you like the main aim is to help your customers or as we like to call as we call them merchants. Uh, you're helping out merchants. And the thing is is that like as I mentioned, like what I know about coding, I could fit on the back of a stamp and I still am yeah. that way today. Yeah. What what the tools that I have, I actually like you know, generally speaking, like you know, working as a lead, the tools that I have I am actually have brought them with me before Shopify, you know what I mean, in yeah. terms of people management and so on and so forth. Now, don't get me wrong, I've obviously learned an awful lot from working with Shopify, but like the basis of, of, of the kind of knowledge and, and, and tools that I'm using, essentially had before Shopify. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, it's, it's, it's always there because like no matter what company that you were going to, you're going to get trained. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. um, it's exactly as, as if you, when you started, when you started, you, you're, you're, you're like, you know, when you started selling shoes, like, you know, you're going to be told where the shoes are. What's yeah. the difference between American <laughs> sizes yeah. and European sizes? You know, yeah. how to work the tail. Yeah. Uh, where, what's, what's the story with the float and the tail and the more, like, you know, you're going to be yeah. taught all that. So it's the exact same, you know. And how I mean? long so, is like, is, is the training and development, is it like a, uh, is it like a day? Is it like an ongoing thing? Is it like a couple of weeks thing? It's so when I started, it was geez, it was six weeks when I started. Um, so constant. Yeah. So you were brought through absolutely every element of Shopify. Then you're brought into a shadowing stage. So the shadowing stage is that you're given live tickets. So live issues that people have. So you actually started on emails, um, and you were given an email. You answer it. You send it off to your your uh, your mentor kind of at the time. They have a read back of it give you any kind of feedback and then you send it off and that's basically it. Mm -hmm. So now what the training, I, oh, um, the training I feel now is about four weeks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's been kind of condensed and, and stuff like that, which is great. So people are kind of out on, onto live channels kind of sooner, sooner rather than later, which is better to kind of just bite the bullet yeah. and, and, and go with it. You mentioned during the interview process then that you had some sort of a test. You, you mentioned the name of the test, but my brain is gone. Um, it was actually, it was actually called the gauntlet um oh, of all okay, things yeah. you know it makes it sound awful I, I, as soon as i heard it, it was like Jeez, it, was, it was kind of something medieval or something yeah um but no what the gauntlet was um it was it it took three yeah it was three three forms so you got a phone call you got um you got a phone call you got a live chat and you got an email and what happened there was you do that you did that with a person live in canada okay so you got the phone call live in canada um, and it was obviously a member of the Shopify team, not, a, not an actual merchant. Um, and you, they give you like one call, which was a person who was absolutely lovely and all that kind of stuff. The next call was a person, person effing and blinding down the phone, just having a bad experience. How you kind of, how you kind of reacted with that and be able to kind of get the person, get the person sorted. Uh, and then the live chat as well, the live chat and the email were, was the same form. You know what I mean? So you would go off, try and troubleshoot. Uh, and give as much information as possible. So it was kind of like really teaching the two elements of, of kind of like what the what the kind of job would have been. It's just like number one, troubleshoot, find the issue. But number two, how you deliver that. So like, I mean, are you being open? Are you being friendly? Are you not being too direct with the person? You know, that kind of way. So on how you like your overall your delivery of it. Yeah. Around the time where the question's more like, you know, like, was it more? It was more like how you deal with it, or did you have to answer more that somebody was having a problem with some technology functionality? And do you know what I mean? Was it more a behavior or attitude thing, or was it how you were dealing at that point with the the more tech side of the support? If that makes um, sense, it was it was both. To be yeah. fair, like I mean, and not 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 to give you a short answer, but yeah. um, it was because like no, like at the end of the day, in terms of the tech side of things and finding the right answer, you have to know what you're kind of looking for or have a good idea what to Google or, or any of that kind of jazz to be able to try and find the answer. Um, and like how, again, how you just delivered it to, to make yeah. sure that you weren't just being too direct and, you know, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, work, working, with, working with merchants all the time, to be fair, like, you know, 90, 98% of people are 100%, but it's just that, it's just that 2% of people who are just having that bad day that course, can yeah. that can be make it make it a bad day for you you know yeah because you're one of the leading e-commerce platforms in the world obviously so you're going to have all sorts of people on that like you've got a big Absolutely. sample size of, of the population 
Um, so I have pasted in the link into the next room where we can all ask questions amongst each other in the chat. But just one more question before we go. And again, if anybody wants to post in without uh, putting their face to camera, you can now. Um, I've just always wanted to know this, right, but you mightn't be able to tell me. You know of all the Shopify stores. Is there any shop that's selling really, really well? Like, I remember somebody was telling me about, like, a random T-shirt store, and they would they had... I don't know, do they have particular slogan or something? And they were selling like really well out of all of the shops. But is there anything quirky or any kind of stores like that online that you're like, oh my God, they are? Yeah, there's one that I love. Uh, well, there's two. I'll give you two examples. Um, uh, I won't, I don't, I don't necessarily want to give up names um, mm. just, just for the, just for the, the, the whole data, the data protection yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but one of them is in Ireland and they sell early. Um, their own yeah. their own brand of Hurleys and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I actually met the person who was in charge of it. Uh, actually speaking at another event, and they just came up came up talking to me about an order. I was like, "Only more than this year." And she read, "Well, yeah. I think we ended up having a pint." Um, you know, so but uh, but like absolutely fat. Um, yeah. I st like started from a shed. Uh, yeah. I think it's actually be fair, actually still in. Well, no, he's, he's got a bigger shed, uh, yeah. and like a business developing and stuff like that. An absolutely class story. Brilliant. Um, the second one that I love though is um, is that there was this father and son in America, yeah. and the son the son had has has Down syndrome, um, but the son just has a thing for wacky socks, like socks that just meant mad designs. He just has a thing for them. So him and his dad started making these wacky socks. And so to set up a Shopify store and the story of them started selling the products more than anything else. So they're now multi, multi, multi millionaires selling uh -huh. these, these socks. But the best part of it, to give half of their profits to the Special Olympics. Uh -huh. So they're like warehouses dotted all over America and stuff like that. And you just hear yeah. a story like that. Oh, there's something like it's mad as selling wacky socks. You know, it just works. Yeah. Know? Um, that's amazing and like, kind of back to Ari thought like if you empower everybody just like cool really cool good for the soul things can happen um, yeah. okay so heard a good bit from Ender there and even in terms of like how he found the work and then also what happens within Shopify so that you know what you're getting into even whether you want it or not so you might think that it sounds like a I don't know, not something you want, and, and, and that's what we want to do as well, ensure that you have, you know, have enough information to know it's not for you. Um, but certainly it sounds fantastic to me. Um, so Enda, thank you very much again for your time. Can't thank you enough because you never you don't stop doing enough for us. So um, thank you for that. And the so the link is in the chat. Again, I hope you've had a time to copy and paste it. It is I, I posted in the, the second the link to the second room is here. So I'm just gonna Control C, copy that now, and I'm going to paste into my browser directly after I come out. But I also posted in there the latest job in Shopify that we saw, which is a, a merchant support role, uh, which is really interesting. And certainly, if you're newly unemployed or new to remote, that might be a good opportunity for you to uh, for you to um, take a look into that particular role. Okay, right, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next room. See you there, guys.